let's welcome to the program candidate for U.S. Senate here in Arizona and uh, happy to have Carrie Lake back on the program. Carrie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. It's good to be with you and, and the folks up in the uh, high country and Prescott and Flagstaff and um, one, of my, one of the most beautiful parts of the country for sure. Absolutely. And they say a pineapple express is coming. Maybe, maybe we're going to have snowmageddon 24. I don't know. We'll see this weekend. Whatever coming up. happens, the media will blow it out of proportion, right? Oh yeah. They do it all the time. Uh, yeah. Right. Well, so let's, uh, let me get your take first on the, the biggest news that happened last night, which is of course the attack that happened in Jordan three U S servicemen dead. Um, many dozens injured, including uh, folks right here from, you know, v- serving our country and serving right here in Arizona. Um, a broader war developing, uh, attack, uh, talk, talk of attacks possibly on Iran now for maybe your, your future colleagues in the Senate. Uh, where would you be right now if you're sitting there and there in, in the Senate, Carrie? Well, I first want to send my condolences to the families of, of the, uh, service members who were killed in the line of duty. This is just un, in, un it's terrible what's happening. And, yeah. and what's horrible about it, Jeff, is that, we were in such a stable position of just a few short years ago. We don't have to be in this position. And this is what truly bad governance, bad foreign policy will do. It will destabilize the entire globe. And so I wish that the folks back in Washington, D.C. had been on Joe Biden all along as he was making these just disastrous policies from Afghanistan to uh, throwing money once again at Iran rather than starving Iran from all that money so that they wouldn't be able to fund terrorism. You know, all of these missteps um, from Joe Biden and his administration have led us right into this scenario for what looks like World War III, and it doesn't have to be this way. I know that um, this is one of the reasons as a mother that I've been so supportive of President Trump. He was all about ending these endless wars bringing our troops home and about really strength, um, peace through strength, as they say, Mm -hmm. President Trump showed strength. And so we need to have a strong leader in our country. Joe Biden is not that man. That's why I'm um, so in in the side of President Trump. And I I know that the Senate, I, I pray, will do the right thing, that they will really analyze what's happening before we we do anything else to make any more decisions that could exacerbate or worsen the situation. Yeah. And what I didn't like, Carrie, is all of a sudden within an hour, there's talks of strikes. You know, we got to get in there and, and get into a direct conflict with Iran. I think something needs to happen here. Um, obviously, there's been a hundred, I think I was reading there's 120 attacks since October 7th that have happened on um, servicemen and women throughout the region in the Middle East. But we, I don't think we can afford to get into a broader conflict unless we have to, but I don't, I don't think this is the point in, in the stage we need to be at, but I, I'd like your thoughts on that. I mean, would you have been with them saying, Hey, let's, let's start bombing. Cause a couple of them no, were saying no. that. This is just, this is really throwing uh, gasoline on a fire right now. And you have to be careful what you're saying, especially with somebody like Joe Biden at the helm, which is frightening. It's absolutely frightening right now to think what he could do. He's made so many missteps along the way and things need to, we need to cool it and and really take a look at what's happening and make our next step and be very decisive. Now I'm going to be honest. I don't have all the information in front of me. True. You and I are sitting here in Arizona and, and to sit here and tell you exactly what I would do as a Senator, I don't have the information in front of me and I don't want to speak and say, I would do this or I would do that. But what I would have been doing is calling out, all of these missteps by Joe Biden, which is destabilizing the globe. You know, what he did in Iran was one of the biggest missteps, I think, in foreign policy ever to all of a sudden be throwing billions of dollars, freeing up billions of dollars when we under President Trump had pretty much starved them of their money and the ability to continue to fund terror around the globe. And so um, I, I really really hope that they're cautious as they go forward, not throwing out words like bomb, 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 you know, yeah. all the things that you've heard. And, and and let's pause for a second and get this right, because we don't have a leader right now who's capable of, of obviously of thinking things through. And so I don't want to sit here in Arizona 
and tell you exactly how I would vote because I don't have all the information in front of me and I like to be a little more careful, especially when we're talking about putting our young men and women in harm's way. Okay, Carrie, um, the other big issue going on is the border and what's going on in Texas. Uh, and Texas standing up in 20, what, 24, 25 states joining in saying, hey, enough is enough. I, honestly, we should have done this. Remember when Ducey did the shipping container thing that cost 180 million or something? It was ridiculous. And then he took them down before Hobbs got in there. We kind of should have been in this position as Arizona about a year ago, but Texas is now doing it and standing up. Uh, is it time for you to go to Texas? I see the truckers are heading to Texas. What, give, give me your take on the border and what's going on. Well, I'm, I'm happy that they're doing something. This was my plan all along. I had my plan, which was called Defend Arizona. I came on your show a number of times. I'm pr pretty sure we talked about yep, it. Yep. And it was calling for me on day one when I took my hand off the Bible to declare an invasion on our border. And we have a right, by the way, to do that as a sovereign state. When the guarantee clause of the United States Constitution is not being followed, which is our federal government protecting us from invasion, we have the right as states to protect our own border and our own citizens. And I wish that Governor Abbott would have acted sooner. He could have acted uh, a couple of years ago. I'm glad he's acting now. We're never going to see that with Katie Hobbs in this state. She doesn't know what she's doing. And actually, she's for open borders, and she's okay with this invasion. So I support Texas 100%. And uh, I think they have to really push back against this tyrannical federal government, which is doing everything in its power, for starters, to open the border. They took an incredible border policy that President Trump had implemented, which was keeping us safe. They pulled it back on day one, Joe Biden did, and now he's got his federal government, all these agencies aiding and abetting to continue this, to keep the flow of human beings being smuggled into our country, drugs being smuggled into our country, and we have an invasion. And uh, real in real short order, I know that President Trump will get busy on this when he gets back in office. He's going to have backup support from people like me in Washington, D.C., and we need to start the largest repatriation project. In order to save our homeland, we have to send these people, these 12 million plus people who poured in under this Biden invasion back to their homeland with the largest repatriation project. Yes, yeah, it's going to take a couple of years to find them all. We don't even know the numbers, Carrie, you know? We don't even know the well, true numbers. What, what, since the past few listen, months, been listen, close to a million. They tracked down everybody who was within a 10-mile radius of Washington, D.C. on January 6th. Don't <laughs> yeah, tell me they can't yeah. find these No, good point. They're well, they can't, they can't track them down. They tra yeah, yeah. They're tracking down grandmas and yeah, grandpas right. and moms and dads and students who wanted to protest uh, you know, shady elections yeah. and they're still tracking them down and, and, uh, giving them a misery. I'm sure we can track down. Yeah, no, you're a good point, Carrie. I, I kind of thought we should do like hands across the border down there. And then maybe we all step over to Mexico and come across and see if they let us back in. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we try something like that. Okay. Let's talk I about heard someone say, I need a new phone. I need a, a airline <laughs> ticket. Maybe I just go across the border and come back in and I'll get it. Yeah, you get more than that probably too. All right, uh, Carrie Lake's with us. Let's talk about what happened over the weekend with the GOP, um, uh, you know, the state meeting, electing new leadership, obviously, and we'll get into the, the tape from last week, Jeff DeWitt, that you had with uh, Jeff DeWitt on tape. Um, what happened? Uh, clearly, you had a new leadership coming. Gina, am I pronouncing right? Swoboda? Yes, Gina Swoboda okay. is an incredible leader in election integrity. She's one of the national leaders in election integrity, and she's right here in Arizona. We're so lucky to have her. I will tell you that uh, Gina, uh, when when our election happened, which was so rigged, um, she actually was one of the people in the war room. And I will never forget, we're about five or six days into the war room right after the election, just of all that they did in our election, all that they did wrong and that was fraudulent. And when I remember on the fifth or sixth day walking into the war room and a lot of people had left and Gina was still standing there. Yeah, She's been there every step of the way. She knows we have to reform our elections or we won't have a country. She wants every legal vote to count. She understands the ins and outs of how the secretary of state's office works, the recorder's office. And she brings with her a lot of support and, and backup for for organizations that want to come in and help fund lawfare to stop the cheating before it happens. It's critical. She's incredible. And the beautiful thing about it is that she's going to help unify the Republican Party, truly unify it. The people are behind her. She's been around for so long. 
and the grassroots loves her. The kind of more traditional Republicans respect her. And so I think she's going to unify the Republican Party, and we are well on our way to having okay. that happen. Okay, not a lot of time left, Carrie, as far as unifying, because we're in the heat of the election. Um, I got a text from Senator Rogers when the vote was happening, and you endorsed her, Trump endorsed her, obviously. And I, I think, the, what, two-thirds of the folks endorsed uh, Swoboda down there. Um, what do you think the attitude, or because the, the media's been making a big huff about some people that booed you, up there because probably I don't know if it's the tape it thing a, with DeWitt. The I, I get hear for straight from you. The beautiful thing about Republicans is that we don't agree on everything. Yeah. And there was a small but loud group that was rooting for the person who was running against Gina. And you okay. know what? They have the right to do that. I've never ever been for censorship. That's fine. I totally get it. It didn't hurt my feelings at all. This is a party meeting where you have a small group, very small group. I mean, Gina won in a landslide. That's big. That's big. 67% of, of the vote went to Gina. And, and, you know, I think even the people who were for Jim, Jim and Gina are really good friends. And, and Jim's a good man. And the people who were for Jim, who were upset, they even like Gina. So they're yeah. going to come around. They truly are. It's disgusting, though. We have the most disgusting media in the entire country <laughs> here in Arizona. They are, they're more worried about why I recorded this than what the contents of the recording was, which is we had a man running the Arizona Republican Party who was trying to bribe me to get me out of politics. The most popular Republican in the state who polling shows not only is uh, can win the Senate seat, this all important Senate seat, the, the US Senate majority runs through Arizona, but I can win it and win it in the general as well. And he's trying to bribe me out uh, from some powerful people back East. We need to root out corruption, whether it's in the Democrat party or the Republican party, we need to root it out. We need to send people to Washington DC, frankly, who Washington DC doesn't want there. And that's why President Trump is perfect for the job because he can't be bribed and he can't be bought. I, you know, I, I'm thrilled, I, I, I'm thrilled I, that, that Jeff has resigned and we've replaced him with an incredible leader who cares about election integrity and will bring this party together. Carrie, I played the tape. I actually did a whole segment. I played the tape in its entirety. I was like, I want people to hear this because I think it was an insight into the sliminess that we know yeah. happens all the time. And uh, I've, I've had Jeff DeWitt on this program many times and I didn't even realize it was him at first. And we got it like an hour before we're going on air. And it sounded like I was looking for like Dr. Evil or like uh, the Godfather with the cat in the beginning, you know, and it just sounded so slimy, but I, I hope it was a wake up call. I saw certain media outlets call them what they, what you want. Um, running with it right off within two hours saying, oh, it's just all a big setup. And I was like, did you listen to the words? Uh, and setup? You know what? Let, let me just answer that. No, right and right. I'm not saying that. No, no, let, no, let no me be I know. Clear. I'm answering yeah, yeah. it for anybody who hears that. Yeah, yeah. He showed, up, he showed up at my door. He gave me about a three or four minute warning that he's on his way over and he has to talk to me about something in person at my door. I said, no, it's not a good time. I'm very busy. No, no, no. It'll just take a few minutes. I have to do this. I can't talk about it on the phone. It has to be done in person. I don't know about you. That's a red flag. That's yep. a red flag. Uh, and I, I just had a feeling I needed to record this in case there was a threat. I did. And I'm sure glad I did because we don't need people like that in our Republican party. We are the Republican party of we, the people. And we do not need corrupt individuals at the helm. And, and Gina's going to have her work cut out. I'm just glad we have somebody in there running it who will unify the party and will work to reform and make sure our elections are honest. That's it was clear. As, yeah, it was clear as day when I heard it. And I said the same thing, Carrie, because I've had some business meetings in the past where a red flag went up and I was like, I got to record this. I mean, it doesn't happen often. And you've, I've heard you on other uh, outlets saying, hey, this is just, this was the first time I'd recorded him. And the only time I, I, am I putting words in your mouth or is that? No, that's actually, okay. that's right. Okay. That's right. And, um, you know, it's, it's the, the law is, I didn't break any laws. You can do that, by the way. Oh yeah. One party. It's a one party state. Yeah. I'm not an attorney. Neither. I don't think you are either, but yeah, as far <laughs> I as I know. I've journalism for a while. Yeah, so yeah, I understand yeah. the law on that. You can't bug a place, but if you got it. You know, if you're recording in, in the state. So, no, there, there is nothing there. Okay, where do we go? I, as far as the party in Arizona, as far as the election, um, it could be a three-way race. It's a tight race. We all know it's going to be a tight race in Arizona. How do you win over the independents? How do you, honestly, you know, I'm, an, I'm an independent now. I switched, you know, the, the Republican Party wasn't conservative enough for me anymore. Um, so I'm, I'm like a I third of the people out there. I told a lot of, of, of the folks on our team, that don't forget a lot of people who are independent now are just fed up 
with the corruption in the Republican Party and the corruption in the Uniparty. So a lot of independents are really folks who want to put America first. And there are people. I um, Polling shows I am the most popular Republican with independents. you got to remember, Jeff, and I know you remember this. I was in the homes of all Arizonans for 27 years. Not just the homes of Republicans, not the homes of just Democrats, all Republicans, all Democrats, all independents. And all I want is to make sure that Arizona is a safe and secure state that we have a safe border, that our economy is thriving for all families and individuals. I don't care if you're a, a liberal. I want you to have a strong economy so that you prosper. And I want you to have safe streets that you can enjoy. And I want your children to go to school and get a proper education, one that actually gives them the skills they need to get the jobs that are out there. I think I have the most unifying message. The problem is the media is so, you know, the, President Trump called him the enemy of the people. And truly, I believe that. They want this corrupt system to continue. You can tell how they're handling this story. They want the corruption to continue. They know I will go in and root it out and their whole corrupt system will come crumbling down. So they don't want um, honest brokers in DC. All right, Carrie. But we, hey. but we do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, change needs to happen, and I, I hope it's just not too late. Um, Carrie, I always appreciate your time, and I wish you the best. And I, I'm I'm looking forward to more conversations as we get deeper into this. Let's do it. I will come on anytime. anytime. Absolutely. Okay, we'll talk with you soon, Carrie. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you to uh, everyone listening on the podcast as well. Do me a favor right now. Please subscribe. I appreciate everybody that's doing it. Subscribe, 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 and share with your friends. If you've already done that, leave a comment. That helps us out a lot, and we'll see you back here real soon.